Hi guys, this is going to be our third and final analysis of The Raven. Um, the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe is one of the most famous narratives that we can analyze together. Make sure that when we're analyzing poems moving forward that you're using um, the discussions that I'm having with you and not just looking them up on Google or something like that because sometimes different people interpret things differently and I just want to make sure that we have the same information. Um, as we're finishing out the story, um, getting into the climactic event and the resolution, then we're going to be looking at specific lines of the poem and analyzing them for figurative language and poetic devices. So pay attention closely. If you want to um, have yours open so that you can take notes, that would be a very good idea. Um, so let me share my screen and I'll go to the poem. Okay. Um, and so here we have just um, kind of picking up where we left off. The bird comes in, begins speaking to the man. The only uh, phrase that he says is never more. Um, and as the internal conflict is developing, on, on one hand, the narrator is feeling such distress over his loss of Lenore, but now the bird is adding to that distress. And so he starts having a dialogue with the bird and the bird, the only thing that the bird repeats is never more. And every question that he's asking is just more distress to the man. So he um, is um, getting into talking to the bird and he, he says, wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels he hath sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. He says, please help me. Did God send you so you can tell me that she's with him in heaven? He wants to know that he's gonna see um, this woman that he loves again as she's passed away. Um, he wants to know, he's, he's begging the bird to answer him. And of course, adding to the distress, the fact that the bird only says nevermore, meaning maybe Lenore is not in heaven. So the question here that the narrator is hoping to have the answer from the bird is that he will see his loved one again in heaven. And what a, a great message for us, you know, as we're thinking about our biblical worldview. And as Christians, we know um, that if our loved ones were believers, we'll see them in heaven. So we do have these biblical illusions here um, as you move through the, the last half of the stanzas of the poem. So here we have swung by seraphim, seraphim are angels. Um, so I have um, highlighted in red some biblical allusion here. Um, you also have a lot of hyperbole, um, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. So, you know, thinking about that exaggerated statement about how the bird is looking at him with fiery eyes and they're burning to his core, these hyperbole um, uh, that the Poe is using all throughout the, the poem. So look for those uh, hyperbole statements. Um, so we're um, getting to the the climax here. He's begging the bird to answer his questions. Um, he's begging the bird to leave. You're not telling me what I want to hear, so just leave. Again, here in, in red, we have more biblical illusion. Heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. He's begging Please tell me I'm going to see her in heaven. Heaven, tell my soul that is just laden with sorrow that I will see her again. And what does he say? The only thing he says is nevermore. Um, we have um, Knight's Plutonian Shore, again, an illusion. Um, you have another hyperbole, take the beak from out my heart. That's, the, you know, that's such an exaggerated statement. And then he says, take thy form from off my door. He again tells him to leave. And our last stanza, our resolution, the bird continues to sit there and doesn't leave. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. So as the poem ends, the bird does not leave and his sorrow is not taken away. And on the pallid bust of Pallas, Again, that is a mythological illusion. Just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. So as he's ending, he's still in his sorrow. 
the bird is still sitting there. So we have kind of that's um, the end of our story. So that was your last and final analysis, um, looking for those examples of hyperbole and uh, all the use of um, illusion. You also have um, really great, th that mus musicality. Um, you have, you know, the great internal rhyme, syncing, linking, uh, thinking. Um, you have this great al alliteration, grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, just great use of these sounds in this wonderful narrative. Okay? So now you're gonna answer a few questions and then we will be moving on to another poem for next week. I hope you have a fabulous weekend.